You can't do this with your regular old run-of-the-mill chat GPT. GPT 1.5 made this poster possible. Welcome back to the channel where AI creativity reign supreme. All right, all right, let's rein it in just a little bit. GPT 1.5, the latest AI image model from OpenAI has been out and about for a few days now. And if you have any social media interaction whatsoever, you have probably seen tons of images that look like these. Obviously it's the holidays, so these are trending all over the place. And just in case you don't have a ChatGPT account, the way that people are creating these over at Chat is click the new image icon over here and you're presented with a bunch of templates. This holiday one just being one of them. But you choose it and you can choose a photo that you wanna upload in this case, I chose this picture of Tracy. It gives you the prompt here, which is some foreshadowing for this video. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that right now. I'll tell you why in a minute. And we get a result like this, which is okay. It looks kind of like her, but I would never mistake this for an actual photo of her. Now, I want to get this comment about what I think is the weak link out of the way, because there is so much that is really awesome about this model that I cannot wait to show you. And I've seen this complaint with some of my friends who have posted images of theirs too. They love the idea, but they say it doesn't look like them. However, that is certainly not always the case. I've gotten some excellent results with the model over here within the chat GPT interface, but there is so much more you can do with it outside of the chat GPT interface. If you create these images using the model inside of open art, like animating it or adding lip sync or changing styles or adding more characters to your image, the list goes on and on. All of these images here, for example, were created with the GPT 1.5 model inside of open art. And I used the prompt that they gave me over here in chat GPT. Well, I just copied this prompt, pasted it in the prompt box with the GPT model selected and chose a reference image of Tracy, which in this case is this one here. I've also got examples from my editor and assistant Presley, and this is the picture I used for her. And then this is the picture I used for the characters with me. And you can see that the generations I did here inside the open art platform are very true to the original image, at least when the character is by themselves. This looks like Presley, and I've got no complaint about the likeness transfer on any of these ones that I've showed you. However, it's when we add a second character that we start to lose some of the detail. Again, I can tell that this is supposed to be me and that's supposed to be Tracy, but but certainly in Tracy's case, it just doesn't look enough like the reference image to be what I would call usable. This is another example. And both of our faces just look a little off. And I would never really expect anyone to believe that this was an actual photograph of us if they knew us. This picture, however, was generated using the Sea Dream 4.5 model. Same exact prompt, same two images, but this time we look exactly like we're supposed to look. In all of the pictures, these all seem like professional images that could have been taken in a studio and they look enough like us that they would be convincing. In fact, I've gotten plenty of response on my social media that has no idea that these aren't real. And I automatically generated all these alternative angles with the multi-angle camera tool that is built into open art. One more example of how the likeness tends to stray a bit in GPT 1.5 when there's multiple characters. So again, here's what Presley really looks like. And here's the picture that was used to generate Amber's model. This is what GPT 1.5 gave us. They are approximations of them, but again, I, I wouldn't believe, especially in this photograph, that these are actually Presley and Amber. On the other hand, this is Sea Dream 4.5, two characters, and everybody looks exactly like their reference image. This is the GPT 1.5 version of Presley in this holiday theme. Remember, this is what she really looks like. And this is the one generated by Sea Dream 4.5. Her eyes are blue because it was prompted that way. But the likeness of the face is much closer here than here. But that's about the worst thing I can say about this model is that it's inconsistent sometimes with human characters. Now let's get into where it is amazing. The real fun power of this and similar models is the ability to, in this case, add up to 16 reference images that the model can compile in an intelligent way to create your final image. And when I say an intelligent way, one of the great things about this model is that it is reasonably smart and it can infer a lot from a simple prompt. So I just wanna share a little mini breakthrough I had with this. I think that a lot of us try to craft the perfect image and I have done so many things where I've dragged in the reference images and I say, okay, I want this person to do this and this person to do this and try and be specific. The great thing about this model and some of the other ones more recently is that I can give it a simple line like combine these images creatively to create a horror movie poster and it will give me this. Perfect text all the way across and all the way down. They just want your soul. I didn't give it any of this instruction whatsoever, except to make it a horror movie. It came up with the title and certainly this look and combine the image is great. And even though this is 1.5, the likenesses are good enough, certainly for a movie poster that I would say, okay, sure. That's Bob and Tracy and Amber. The same prompt in Sea Dream 4.5, gave me this. Not really a movie poster and not nearly as compelling as this right here. 
So this sent me down a whole rabbit hole of documents that I could easily create and let the model do most of the creative work. I combined all these scary little images here and said combine these images to create a horror movie poster and got that. Now, in an effort to get better consistency with the characters, when I was using the GPT 1.5 model, I went over to ChatGPT and asked it, how can I make this work? And it gave me some prompts that are supposed to lock in the identity of their characters. However, I found that it had minimal impact at best. Like it put a little prompt here that person A reference image one, person B reference image two, and preserve facial structure, all of these instructions to not change anything. And it would still give me sort of versions of Tracy and a version of me. But aside from those special instructions, my only prompt was combine these images into a movie poster for an intense spy thriller in Greece. And it gave me this and this. I tried it in Sea Dream 4.5 and got this and this. Again, not nearly as compelling. The likenesses are better, certainly in this case for me, but the creative output, not nearly as good as GPT 1.5. However, to be fair, that normally happened when I did realistic styles with Seed Dream. Now, I did a ton of examples for a Christmas-related movie poster, trying the different models and slightly different visual styles. The prompt is, in the 3D Pixar animated style, combine these people, there's Tracy and Amber and me, into a comedy movie poster for Bob Saves the Party that features the two women frantically trying to set up for a Christmas party, while Bob, the man in the blue shirt is somehow saving the day. Although I wouldn't necessarily say that this is the Pixar animated style, we do have an animated style and it came up with the details of everything. And because it's not necessarily dependent on it being a photographic representation, and it can be stylized a little bit. I love the spirit of them. I love the font choices. I just love everything. But having said that, when I use a Pixar animated style with the Sea Dream model and give it the same prompt, I start getting things like this, which look really, really good, are stylized. Although the likenesses are hit and miss, the Tracy one looks good, Amber's not really there. I mean, we've got the clothes right, same thing with me. We got the t-shirt, but it doesn't really look like me. This is Nano Banana Pro, also really good at this kind of thing, combining all the various elements and knowing what to do with it. It's smart. It created this whole scenario of how I say, the party. So it really comes down to stylistic choices, but that's the great thing about doing all this over at Open Art. You don't have to just choose one model. You can choose all of them and figure out which one you like the best in any given situation. This is a great example of just throwing a bunch of pictures together that I just found in a directory. Seriously, there was no logic about this. These three here are characters that I've created within Open Art, but they could be any image. This was just a random image of a mushroom that I dragged in, and then a picture of my friend Jim. And I just said, combine these images to create a highway billboard for Frank's Emporium of Oddities. Next exit, food, gas, oddities. The man with the beard is Frank. And it gave me this. It's got Frank labeled. Everybody looks exactly how they're supposed to. This is GPT 1.5. And this is a case where the likeness is exactly right. Hello, Benito! Hello! So it is not across the board off, it's just sometimes. And I get more consistent results with human likenesses with Sea Dream 4.5. But again, creativity rules in GPT 1.5. But something else that is a lot of fun and has a ton of potential about the GPT 1.5 model is that it's smart. It knows stuff. It can figure things out. Let me show you some fun examples. I'm asking the model to do some reasoning here. And so I first chose Sea Dream 4.5 and I said, what happens if these two characters want the same parking space in New York City? So I got this character Flurp, and I've got this mad scientist guy. And basically what it did was it put them in the same place at the same time around a parking place with New York City. But it's not really clear what they're doing about it. They just seem to be sort of like staring at each other like, hey, this is a parking place. Yeah, it sure is. And sure, I guess that's one result of what would happen if they found the same parking place. But when I asked GPT 1.5 what happens when they want the same parking space, we've got a little bit more creative and thoughtful inter- They're mad at each other. They're arguing over it. It adds some real fun emotion and play into the situation, which I think is way more interesting than what Sea Dream gave us. Here's what Nana Banana Pro thinks would happen if these two characters met at the same parking space. This is the cartoon result. And this is the other one. But again, this model inferred way more about what was going on and what emotions might be actually happening, like the GPT 1.5 model did way more than Sea Dream did when it just kind of put him in the same spot. I also asked GPT 1.5 to do a little bit of math, a little bit of algebra, everyone's favorite subject. What happens if these two characters solve the equation of 2x plus 9 equals 15, solving for x on a chalkboard? This is 1.5, and you see we got all the work done here. It's been a while since I was in school. I'm not sure if this is what's supposed to be done. But they did get the right answer, which I knew in advance. 
scan. This is also GPT 1.5 and they worked it all out and got the correct answer. Now, same exact prompt, but this is what C-Dream gave us. They're working it out on board, but we don't have the answer. We got the equation up there and the look is great and bright and friendly and wonderful and I like it. It just didn't happen to do the work for us. This is the other C-Dream output and the answer might be coming in there somewhere, although I'm not sure this or this is actually a number. I actually didn't run it with Nano Banana Pro, but my guess is it would also do the math correctly. Of course, now I have to find out for myself. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to choose Nano Banana Pro and the prompt and everything just stays the same. And I'm going to render that and just test my theory. Nano Banana gave us a cartoon, but I think it also gave us the best description of how to solve this equation. Here's a fun Bob Doyle trivia fact. I'm originally from Stone Mountain, Georgia, and Stone Mountain is the largest piece of exposed granite in the world. And of course, I've known that forever, but I wondered if the model knew it and if it could prove that it knew it. So with GPT image 1.5, I said characters are sitting on top of the world's largest exposed piece of granite in Georgia, USA. I really helped it along there with Georgia, USA. And this is what it gave us. And I can tell you, having climbed this mountain eight gazillion times in my life, this is absolutely Stone Mountain. You see Atlanta in the skyline in the background, so they've got this handled chat GPT did. But just to make sure I knew that it knew it was Stone Mountain, I tweaked the prompt a bit and said they're sitting on top of the world's largest exposed piece of granite in Georgia, USA, holding up a sign ha, that reveals exactly where they are and what they're sitting on. GPT 1.5 freaking nailed it. On top of Stone Mountain, Georgia, the world's largest exposed piece of granite. That's exactly what I was hoping for. This is the other generation from 1.5 sitting atop Stone Mountain, the world's largest exposed piece of granite, Georgia, USA. Again, no misspellings. The fonts are great. The character consistency is perfect. When I tried this in Sea Dream 4.5, I get this. Number one, this is not Stone Mountain. And it just says world's largest exposed granite. Georgia, USA, it, it doesn't seem to know any knowledge of Stone Mountain. This is the other Sea Dream 4.5 output. We do not have cliffs like this on Stone Mountain. However, Sea Dream is not completely ignorant of the southeastern United States because when I said characters are under a peach tree holding a sign that reveals the name of the capital of Georgia, USA, both GPT 1.5 and Sea Dream knew it was Atlanta and put it on the sign, but very different styles here. This Sea Dream style is so whimsical. And while I'm not saying this one's not whimsical, it seems to have a little bit more grounding in reality, maybe in the peach trees, but this is the 1.5 model. Again, I freaking love the creative output of this model. It is my favorite part of it. One last example, the bane of a lot of people like me's existence is getting this thumbnail right. Oh my God, it's such a pain on your butt. You get the video done and everything's done and now you gotta do a thumbnail. So for a recent video, I just started playing with an idea that I'm still finessing, but it's still an idea. I threw in several examples of our thumbnails and a picture of me. And I said, the man in the first image is me and need to be featured on the YouTube thumbnail in the style of the reference images where the video is about the new Sea Dance 1.5 AI video model, which was my latest video. I need a great headline and be optimized to attract clicks. I tried several models here and got some very different results. These that look so artistic, this one and this one and this one, this one, this one, these are all 1.5 and you can kind of tell because they're so out there creative. They don't look a lot like my previous thumbnails, but they are things I might want to play around with and experiment with just to see. We do run into the problem, however, with the 1.5 model where this likeness is just not quite me. I mean, it's me, but it's not me. Same with this. Does it really matter for these thumbnails? I don't know. You tell me. Sea Dream, on the other hand, did a much better job of copying the styles of my previous videos and mm, not perfect, but better likeness. This is also Sea Dream output and you can see it incorporated some of the prompt in there, optimized visuals elements. I wouldn't be using that and YouTube images isn't a thing, but some of these are interesting enough that I would probably want to test them. It even put mine and Open Arts logo in there. I like this one because it incorporated the music and audio aspect of the Sea Dance model. However, it had the YouTube logo on it and it said mode instead of model. And this is a prime example of why it's so great to have this here in open art, because if I want to, I can just go to use image and go click chat to edit. Now I'm in a chat interface with this image and I can just give it instructions on how I want it modified. So the first instruction I gave it was remove the YouTube logo. And then it gave me this image right here. And then the next instruction was change mode exclamation point to model. And then it gave me that. 
So I can iterate and iterate with just natural language. So this specific use case is something I'm going to be playing with more and more because, as I said, thumbnails aren't that fun. And if I can get some AI logic in, well, what would be a good headline? What's a good font color choice? And I don't have to think of it. And it can use its knowledge for that. I'm going to try it. Here's another example where I just dragged in a bunch of different characters and images and said to combine these images into a movie poster for a road trip buddy movie filled with chaos called Pull Over. So I got all of these. And then, you know, when I see stuff like this, I just want to animate it. And that's what spawned the animations that opened up this video, both for this and this. Again, another great advantage of being here in an ecosystem where all I have to do to bring these things to life is to click on image to video. And now I have access to all of the latest video models that they're adding to all the time. This is why I spend all my time here. So even though I have that one complaint about inconsistent character likeness transfer on some photographs, this model blows my mind. I've been playing with it for hours and hours and creating Christmas cards and posters and all kinds of things just by throwing a bunch of images together and seeing what it comes up with. And then taking those images and bringing them into one of the many video models here and just letting creativity get unleashed. This is just another step in the incredible momentum that open art has right now in terms of helping us, the creators, tell our stories with all the tools we need to do it without having to jump from platform to platform. I love it more and more every day. If these are the types of tech and technologies you'd like to learn about, well, I think a good idea would be to subscribe to this channel just in case you haven't already, because these are the types of topics we love exploring all the time.